Everyone is trying to build the banks of the future. And by everyone, I mean everyone. Tech companies are trying to build the banks of the future. Crypto companies are trying to build the banks of the future. Today's banks are trying to build the banks of the future. But for one new Bitcoin and digital asset bank, the question goes far beyond the digital experience that I think is the end of a lot of those conversations. Uh, I'm joined by Caitlin Long, a 22-year Wall Street veteran and founder and CEO of Avanti. Caitlin, thanks for hanging out. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's nice <laughs> to be with you. Man, it's. Uh, I was thinking back. Um, the The last time we talked was the day that you announced Avanti, which I think was February twenty fourth, and I remember because it was a Monday, and it was the first day that markets in the U.S. even recognized that COVID nineteen was going to be a thing, even yeah. though people like you had been talking about it since the end of January and talking about you know wh what the the potential might mean. But we'll we'll get to that. But but let's come back to uh, Avanti first. What is Avanti? Uh, why did it feel important to to focus on this to start Start a new type of financial institution? Well, first of all, um, Avanti is in the process of applying. So we are not yet <laughs> a bank, but we will be applying for a bank license. And that's what's new and different. And it will be the first truly natively um, uh, crypto industry owned uh, bank that will be serving exclusively the, the, the crypto industry. And it, it, it will be a chartered bank, if we, assuming we do get our charter, with a Fed master account. Um, that's the, the, the real aha of this is that there are no banks in the U.S. that are allowed to custody crypto assets because they're being blocked by their existing regulators. And the exchanges and custodians that do custody crypto assets do not have direct access to the Fed. So here's the aha. It is not possible to do delivery versus payment, atomic swap, et cetera, against a digital asset and a dollar, but Avanti will be able to bring that to the U.S. market for the first time, assuming we get our charter. Yeah, so it's it's really interesting. Like I, like I said at the top of this, um, uh, you know, everyone's trying to reinvent banks in some way or another, but I think a lot of those things have to do with simplifying user experiences, right? Trying to kind of cater to the most basic kind of day in, day out functions where you guys are kind of designing from the ground up for a new type yeah. of ecosystem, a new type of asset. And I know that one of the things that makes you different is that you and Avanti and the state of Wyoming, where you're based, have a pretty different set of beliefs about issues like uh, property rights and reserves than today's financial institutions. Can you speak a little bit to just how you actually think differently? What the, the different belief set is, even, even beyond just the assets themselves? Well, it's a belief set that is consistent with the core philosophy of crypto, that, uh, that individuals should be able to have a direct property right in their financial assets. It doesn't exist in traditional financial assets today. And uh, Wyoming law was, it, we created this special purpose depository institution, it, which is a new type of bank charter. It's a narrow charter that allows the bank to accept deposits, but not to lend. Um, so it's essentially a bank that is a, a payment services institution. Uh, and it is, it, it is therefore able to both provide custody services and payment services within the same legal entity. So you don't have to, you don't have to settle those two, the two legs of the trade sequentially, which is exactly what happens now. Um, even, even those that are, that are, that are claiming there's direct settlement of the payment, there's still not direct settlement of the payment because you still have the counterparty risk that the bank might fail. Um, and so, so uh, it, th this, this philosophy of property rights is really important and it's ensconced in the Wyoming law. We will be able, assuming we get our charter, to offer um, uh, uh, custody services on, on a legal term that's called a bailment. It doesn't exist today. But when you, when you store a Bitcoin at an exchange or at a custodian, you don't actually own the Bitcoin. It's an IOU. But what's going to happen in Wyoming when the speedy banks, the so-called speedy banks, special purpose depository institutions open their doors, is that we will actually have the ability to have the same legal re regime as a coat check or a valet parking regime where I'm giving up temporary possession of my property, but it's not, I'm not giving title to, to the custodian. Um, right now, you're giving legal title when you, when you have hold your exchange, uh, your your coins at an exchange or a custodian. You they're not only in possession of the private keys, but they also have the legal title. We're making the distinction that those two things are not necessarily the same thing. You can like a valet parking arrangement or a coat check 
a hand over temporary possession, but not actually temp, uh, not actually ownership. And as a result, when you put your your coins into uh, a, a third party um, uh, custodian, you actually still retain the legal title, and all they are doing is just being a money warehouse for you, just providing a service. They're not a counterparty, and if they go bankrupt, you're not stuck in a uh, in a in a in a nasty long drawn out bankruptcy process. That's a huge difference from what exists today. It doesn't exist in the market today. It's really fascinating. I think that it's uh, it's almost um, it's almost easy to be reductive about uh, something like this in the sense of it being like, oh, cool, it's a crypto native bank. It works on top of crypto uh, in a way that's very different. But I think that in some ways, if you watch kind of the larger macro conversation about how the economy is structured, the conversation that people are starting to have more and more, which is a conversation that's very very fluent for the Bitcoin world, but not so much for other areas, is the conversation about the the fundamental nature of the system as inflationary versus deflationary. So uh, Jeff Booth recently wrote a book called The Price of Tomorrow, which is all about moving to a deflationary system that rewards savings rather than disincentivize savings. And in some ways, the crypto community, the Bitcoin community, that is the hodlers, are at the vanguard of that shift where they, they've yep. invested in an asset that is meant to uh, grow in value over time to reward savings uh, rather than be something that to participate in the economic system, you just have to lend it out, relend it and get further lines of credit. And in some ways, it feels like Avanti is, is maybe the first native institution to that different way of looking at the economy in general. Yes, um, I think so. First of all, I, I want to clarify, we're not a crypto bank. That phrase is mm -hmm. easy to, to use, but, uh, but the, the services that we are providing on our balance sheet are exclusively US dollars. We are allowed to custody crypto through the trust powers of the bank. That may sound like a distinction without a difference, but to regulators, it's a big deal. So uh, so, so I don't use that phrase crypto bank. We are a bank serving the crypto industry uh, that, that can provide custody services um, off our balance sheet. But um, to, to answer your question, yes, um, we, we are, as a, as a bank that's not lending, we're obviously not what, what a lot of folks think as a normal bank. And again, we, we don't have our charter yet, but the, the Wyoming Speedy Banks uh, in general, um, th these, are, these are banks that, that have full access to deposit taking capabilities in the way that um, money transmitters or trust companies do not have in the United States. Uh, but um, um, we cannot make loans. And as a result, everything on the Speedy Bank's balance sheets is 100% backed by definition. Um, the, 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 the dollar deposit liabilities are 100% backed, required to be 100% backed uh, under the law by um, either deposits directly at the Fed or uh, treasury bonds or other so-called risk-free assets. Um, and, uh, and then even in the trust business, lending is permitted by the statute but reapplication is not permitted. That's where so many of the games are being played. Um, and frankly, I've, I've been pretty critical of, of the existing infrastructure in the, in the crypto industry because we have no clue whether any of the exchanges or custodians are solvent. Um, I think the ones that actually do come into Wyoming will be making quite a statement when they come in because if they can comply with that requirement, then that'll tell you that they're actually, uh, that, that, well, it's at least another indi indicator uh, among many potential types of indicia that, uh, that, that uh, the, the exchange or custodian is, is solvent. But right now, you really don't have any of them. Um, none of them are audited. Um, um, none of them are, are publishing proof of reserves. And none of them are subject to legal regimes that require 100% reserves. Uh, and even, uh, you know, in the, in the state of New York, where a lot of the regulated ones have trust companies, there is no requirement not to rehypothecate assets. In Wyoming, there's an explicit requirement that, that uh, the speedy banks cannot rehypothecate assets. They can lend, but you can't relend the same collateral a second time. It's really interesting. It's it, one of the things that's been fascinating is seeing how much this sort of this change, this different type of institution that you want to build, goes hand in hand with redesigning. Uh, you, I mean, you you literally this came out of in some ways you designing or helping design a different regulatory regime to enable this type of thing, right? It's a different way of thinking of uh, of how to design it, and then uh, a different application of the business. But I, so I, I wanted to go back, I guess, to you know what we've lived through in the last couple months. You announced 
announced Avanti, like I said, just just as it was really starting to hit home in the U.S. that this was going to be a thing. How has yeah. the narrative uh, for for this, the motivation for it, or just the way that people perceive it, changed since that announcement? What are new challenges, or what are new tailwinds that are helping your cause? Well, uh, actually, it's 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 been a tailwind. Um, I must say, on the engineering team hiring uh, our CTO Brian Bishop, who's amazing, um, has said. It usually would take three to four months to find the the engineers with the skills that he's looking for, and he's able to find them um, in, in in relatively short order. So that's been uh, been something that's been an advantage to us. The other piece of this is, I think, the idea of having a non lending bank. You know, when I first started talking to folks about this in January, a lot of folks were saying, you know, how would that be able to compete with a bank that can lend? Because a bank that can lend can can make money off the leverage and can uh, subsidize the cost of, of doing business in a way that you would not be able to because you're not making a spread on your customers' deposits. And, uh, and so ironically, the fact that, you know, interest rates are back down at zero now, um, and, uh, and, and in fact, now we actually have some interesting questions what do the ba balance sheets of traditional banks actually look like? The truth is no one knows. The uh, decision has been made that uh, the loan losses are not going to have to be recognized this year. So 2021 is going to be the time when loan losses are, you know, when the actual cash flow uh, losses are, are going to have to be recognized, um, even though they're not going to be recorded uh, as, as much on an accounting basis up front. So we won't know how how well capitalized the banks are until 2021. And that's about the time when the speedy banks will be uh, hitting the market. And so it's it, it, the customers are going to have an interesting choice. Would you rather deposit your money at a bank that's not paying you interest, but is leveraged? Or would you rather deposit your money at a bank that's not paying you interest, but isn't leveraged? That's a, that's a pretty, in my view, pretty easy uh, pretty easy choice. Hey, I want to go back to the point on lending because I may have confused folks when I talked about um, the no rehypothecation because um, yes, a speedy bank can lend, but it's a non-lending bank and that may seem like a logical contradiction. Here's the difference. And it, it comes down to the fact that the crypto custody business is done out of the trust department of the bank. It's not lending for the bank's own balance sheet. So a customer can direct that, that it's deposited crypto be lent out to a willing lender, but the lender will not be the bank itself. So essentially all the bank is doing is basically just providing a marketplace to match borrowers and lenders. Um, we don't intend to have a lending product up and running um, immediately. I'm laying out though that the statute in Wyoming does permit that. Wanted to make that clear just in case. Uh, I, I was assuming there'll be Twitter questions about that. Uh, wh how, wait a minute, how do you lend out of a non-lending bank? Uh, so hopefully now I answered it. Yeah, sure. It sounds like it all comes back to the same principle of your money, like the property rights, like the the assets that you deposit with us are your assets, and we help you do things with them, but we don't uh, we don't take the title to them. So, uh, but well maybe a, a, a last question uh, to wrap us up: Do you think the country is ready for this fundamentally different conversation about money and banking, or at least more ready maybe than we were before this crisis hit? Oh, yes. Um, I think actually one of the things that a lot of folks uh, have been talking about in, in leading up to the having is how many of their friends and family have been asking them about Bitcoin for the first time. Now, it's it's been in the news in part because of the having. I get that. But I actually think that um, it's not as much in the news as it was, you know, in the prior having and the prior soft fork um, and and uh, and the and the bull market. Obviously, um, this is different. It's a different level of conversation with folks. Uh, and and um, I, the other piece of this is the institutional interest. When Paul Tudor Jones came out uh, and said that he's got one to two percent of his portfolio in Bitcoin. Um, wait till you see what happens with institutions. This, there are more coming. Um, we will have some announcements. Uh, Avanti is an institutional, inst institutionally focused bank, or will be, <laughs> assuming we get our charter. Uh, and and um, we're very focused on bringing in a new type of investor who hasn't been in this asset class before, in large part because the services around the asset class, the infrastructure that's been built, was built for a retail customer base, and it's not up to par on institutional standards. The, the, if you just go look at the legal terms and conditions 
some of them are just a joke. And, and, and institutional attorneys for the buy side for big pension funds, big um, foundations, big endowments, sovereign wealth funds, right? I'm not talking about hedge funds. Hedge funds are known to take more risk and hopefully have higher reward. Pension funds and the like have much higher standards and they just can't touch a fly-by-night organization. They want their custodians to be banks um, and, they, and they need serious institutional quality legal terms and conditions and, and legal certainty with regard to whether their transactions will be final and will be recognized in a legal dispute. Those kinds of things we've been very focused on. Those are the bricks and mortar in Wyoming that we've built that other states just can't offer. Uh, and so I think the fact that we will hopefully now have an institutional custody bank um, that can custody crypto and have direct access to the Fed and service institutions with with the standards that they require, we, that, that is likely to bring in big institutional money. And we're seeing it step by step by step. And, and that's what's different. It's not just the, the friends and family. It's also the big institutions. Well, it's going to be super exciting to watch. I wish you nothing but luck, Caitlin. I'm sure I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Take care.